Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of the MMA Corners one-on-one. -on -one. I am your host Jason Schilke and I am joined by the Ring of Combat Bantamweight Champion undefeated as a professional Julio Arce. Julio, how are you doing today my friend? I feel great, fantastic, enjoying a beautiful day in New York after all this crazy weather. I I hear you man. I, 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 got, I, I saw on Facebook some of my boys out in Colorado saying that they're building snowmen. <laughs> in april that, that sucks <laughs> so at least you don't have any of that out there right now yeah enjoying so, the nice beautiful sun absolutely my man absolutely so first off why don't you tell the fans a little bit about yourself um well you know i fight at tiger showman's mma i've been doing a martial arts for 12 years and you know i started out as a fat chubby kid you know just looking to lose weight and you know then I just fell in love with training and again and eventually I just you know at my turn 18 I got my first fight and then from there I just you know took off and this is where I am now awesome man now now you you've done more than just MMA you went 7-0 and as, a, as an amateur boxer 12-1 and as a, a kickboxer and then you went 11-0 in amateur MMA what made you decide to do MMA instead of, you know, pursuing a career in professional boxing or professional kickboxing? Because when, you know, MMA is now you're just putting all the tools together. You know, I did every other discipline to then just get good in those areas. So, for example, if I needed to work on my kickboxing, I have to do kickboxing. I have to work on just my hands, then I'll do just boxing, you know, and then I'll do, you know, I, I do grappling tournaments so then I can get my grappling game and wrestling all you know good all around so then when I go in the cage I'm comfortable in every area and you know then it's there's no holes and now like I'm just a wrestler I'm not just a grappler like I'll be able to handle myself standing and if it goes down to the ground I can also handle myself on the ground now you bring up something interesting I want to hit on because um a lot of younger fighters like yourself coming up, like before back in, you know, back, you know, even five, six years ago, when you had fighters coming up, they would be like a wrestler and they'd pick up striking and everything along the way. Or they'd be a straight up, you know, or they'd just be a striker and they pick up the ground game and, you know, or vice versa. Where fighters like yourself that are younger, that are coming up through the ranks and everything, you are entering the cage completely well-rounded. You're schooled in all aspects of what it takes to be a mixed martial arts fighter. How do you think that uh, the sport has benefited from, you know, from your generation coming in and being you know being trained in all disciplines instead of you know being in one and kind of picking up the rest as you go along see now it's going to get more challenging because now people are like i said they're sharpening themselves in every aspect in every discipline that they need to know you know when they get in the cage so when you go in there like it's you got to be you got to be a smart fighter right so it makes the fight more exciting and it also in a fighter wise more technical so you have to be really smart when you get in there and have an, a proper game plan and not just rely on one thing you got to have also alternatives when you're in there because if the guy is good in striking you're good in striking then you have to go down to the ground if the guy's good on the ground and you're good on the ground you have to you know find a way to beat that person it's like a chess match right, right. so it makes it more exciting for you know, for like this new gener for the new generation of fighters up and coming, because like I said, they're sharpening themselves all around, boxing, kickboxing, and the grappling, the wrestling. So you have to kind of train harder than that person, or you know, just really be, you know, you have to be smart when you're in there in that fight. You can't just go out there and go crazy because that's where you get caught. You have to be more technical. Now speaking of technical fights. You have one coming up, May 16th. You're going to be defending your championship belt against Giovante. I'm not even going to try to pronounce his last names. I know I'll butcher it. <laughs> yeah. So I apologize there. But uh, to start with, tell me what you know about your opponent. Um, I know he's a, he's a big, uh, like, a grappler. And, I mean, his when he fought Miguel Torres, he went to a decision. So, I mean... Miguel Torres couldn't finish him, so that tells you that he's he's 
tough guy, right? Mm-hmm. Not just like, I mean, tough guy, but like he, he probably has a lot of heart and he's down to fight. And his other two wins, you know, were by submission. And he also fought a, a former, uh, I think, a Jeff Lentz. And he went to a decision with him. So, you know, he's going to be one of those that's hard to finish. So I'm going to have to have a really good game plan in mind for him. So as far as um, the level of competition you faced thus far in this career, where would you rank this fight? What do you mean, where would I rank this fight? Like, as far as, like, um, you know, is you know, is, is this guy going to be, you know, on paper, do you think that this is the toughest fight of your career? Or, you know, how, how, what's your outlook going into the fight? Um, I just... I just think of it as like you know, it's another it's a it's another tough fight. Like every fight gets harder than the last one, you know. And it's just it gets me more excited. And I just see it as it. If I win, it would only bring me closer to where I want to be, right? And just right. like each time, each person that steps in front of me, they just get tougher and tougher. And I know that if I win, then it's only going to put me closer to where I need to be and where I want to be. And by where you want to be, I'm assuming you're referring to the UFC. Yep. And so actually, um, going, um, going into this interview, I, you know, talking to your manager, talking to the rear combat promoter, there's a lot of hype surrounding you. They think that you are going to be the next big thing at 35. Um, they have really high hopes for you. They think that once you make it to the UFC, you're going to make a huge splash. Um, yeah, just everybody is really, really high on you um, and your talents and your abilities. Do you feel any extra pressure knowing that you know, people think so highly of you um, going into your fights or you know when you're training or you know or or do you even worry about it? Do you just you know take what's in front of you and deal with that? You know what? Like uh, normally, like I would, I would, I would feel like the pressure. Like when I first started, you know, up and coming, and I made it to the pro levels. At first, I felt that type of pressure, but then I sat back and I'm like, you know, when I'm fighting, I'm this is for me to make myself better as a martial artist, and you know, I'm just putting in the work. You know, it's just like if I train every single day, and I know that every time that I train. I'm not going to be slacking, right? I'm working hard even after I mean I just fought uh last week uh in a kick a pro kickboxing fight and I was back in training the next day. So it's like I'm not going to stop. And I know that in the back of my head I'll know my opponents are not doing this, right? They're not, you know, they'll take time off, they'll relax and then okay, when it's fight time, they'll go. I'm always going even after mm-hmm. fight time. Mm-hmm. I go right back into training, right? I'm not wasting any time. I want to make sure that I'm in, I'm already in shape. And then when it comes to fight time, I'm in even better shape. So my conditioning would just be like unreal. Right. And then my opponents won't be able to keep up with that. So I'm always busy. I'm always training. There's, there's no rest. There's no time off. So everything you're doing, you're just busting your butt to get to that end goal. Exactly. Gotcha. Now, it as far takes, as you, I'm sorry. I said that's what it takes. It's just, you know, hard work. Yeah, put in the time. Exactly. No one gets there sitting on their butt, right? Mm-hmm. So as far as your fight, your your upcoming title fight, how's it going to go down? What's going to happen? Um, one well, the first couple, the first round, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna feel them out. You know, I'm gonna see. How the where this fight is gonna go, and then we're gonna take it from there. I mean, in a fight, anything can happen. He might come out and surprise me and try to go in a striking fight, or maybe he'll stick to a grappling. So I don't know. So far, I, I you know I'll start off. I'll start with my hands, and I'll start you know just throwing my strikes and see where it goes from there. So any predictions besides you winning? <laughs> I don't know. I can't tell. Like I said, anything can happen in a fight in the blink of an eye. So we'll wait and see till the fight day. All right, Julio, man. Well, it's definitely been a pleasure having uh, having you on here today. Um, before uh, we in, uh, start to wrap this up, um, the forum's yours, my friend. 
Um, well, I just want to, you know, I want to thank you for having me on the radio show. I want to give a shout out to all my, you know, all the students in Tiger Showman's from, you know, in every school, everybody in the organization, my coaches, Tiger Showman himself, all my teammates who always who were always there helping me get ready. Um, you know, my family who's always there supporting me no matter what, you know, especially my sisters they've been there since day one since i turned 18 in my first fight always yelling in my corner They're the only ones i hear yelling is awesome and um i want to thank a tie gear fight gear right they're the ones to supply me with everything i need you know to you know for my uh for my training and just uh, also you know my manager dave fish uh, and my instructor uh, sensei got for you know he just he's led me all the way and he's just really really just taking me to a whole new level. And I just, pretty much my entire Tiger Showman's family, I just can never thank them enough for getting me to where I am today. And it's just, it's just unbelievable. All right. And for people that want to follow you on social media, how can they do that? Um, you guys can uh, follow me on, on Instagram, uh, JulioRSA27, and then on Twitter, JRSATSMMA, you know, and just, you know, just Follow me on my journey. I mean, I got dreams that are worth more than my sleep right now. So I'm really excited. I can't wait. Well, Julio, I know we're gonna. there's going to be a ton of people um, following your journey and following your career. And it's been a pleasure talking to you today. Thank you, too. And that wraps up another edition of the MMA Corners One-on-One, -on -One, brought to you by Soul Electronics. Soul, power, clarity, comfort. Check them out, soulelectronics.com. Once again, Julio, thank you again for your time, my friend. Thank you very much for having me. We appreciate it, all right?